Hello friends, this video on improvement in food resources part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us see how do we go with crop production management. I mean in, in the last topic we saw how do we improve the variety of the crop. Now we will see how can we improve the production of crops. Now several practices are followed to increase crop production. There are a variety of ways by which we increase the amount of crop which is getting produced. When we talk of the crop production, it is directly proportional to the inputs. That means the kind of input you give is the kind of output which you will get. Now, when you uh, look at our country, for example, in India, the farmers are involved in agriculture, right? So they are the ones who are actually giving the inputs. Now, their inputs will again depend upon their financial condition, their purchasing capacity. Now, whatever inputs you want to give, whatever practices you want to follow, you need to spend some money to implement that technology, right? For example, if you want to put some special chemicals which will help in more crop production or you want to implement something else which we will talk about in the next few slides. So a farmer's purchasing capacity decides the cropping system and the production practices which he is going to follow. Right. So now there can be three categories of um, production. One is no cost production. That means the farmer doesn't spend much money for the production. Another one is low cost production. So some amount of money is spent there. And the last one is high cost production. So now depending upon the farmer's purchasing capacity or farmer's financial condition, he has to decide whether he wants to go for no cost production, low cost production or high cost production. Now it is very obvious that as the cost increases, it is basically the inputs are increasing. So when you spend more money, you are actually implementing more uh, you are implementing better practices, you are implementing better technologies and as a result you will be getting better results. Right? So that is why also it is very much important that our farmers should be paid well for whatever they are doing because when they are paid well they will have enough money with them, they will have better purchasing capacity and that is how they can uh, implement the best practices for crop production. Right? Okay. So now let us see how is crop production management done. So now there are different ways by which crop production management is done. The first one is nutrient management. Next is irrigation. And the last one is cropping patterns. So these are the three ways by which crop production management is done. So these are the three techniques by which the amount of crop which is being produced can be increased by a large extent. Now we will discuss about each of them one by one. So let us start with the nutrient management. Now as the name suggests, nutrient. Now as we all know, we all eat food. Why do we eat food? Because to live healthy, right? Sometimes when we fall ill, the doctors say that eat well, eat lots of vegetables, take lot of fruits. Why? Because you will get lot of vitamins and minerals from that. You will be strong. So we need nutrients to be healthy. Similarly, plants also need nutrients to be healthy. So nutrient is a substance that provides nourishment to the plants. Right? So it is not only that nutrient provides nourishment to plants alone, it provides nourishment to animals also. But here we will be talking only about the plant nutrients. So let us see what are the nutrients for a plant. What are the things that a plant need to be healthy? Now, a plant needs 16 nutrients in total. So, what are those nutrients? It's carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, manganese, boron, zinc, copper, molybdenum and chlorine. So, these are the 16 nutrients which are needed by a plant. So, if a plant gets all of these nutrients in proper amounts, then the plant will be healthy. Correct. So now how do plants get these nutrients? Because a plants, plants do not move, they do not eat food. Right. So how do they get these nutrients? Now when we look at the list of these nutrients, we see that carbon and oxygen, these two things are obtained from air. So when the plants breathe in, they get carbon. So carbon and oxygen can be obtained from air. 
again oxygen and hydrogen is obtained from water now what is water water is nothing but h2o so water has lots of hydrogen and oxygen so plants can get oxygen and hydrogen from water now other than that these nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus potassium calcium magnesium and sulfur so these are some of the nutrients which plants need in large amounts they need they, they need these few nutrients in large amount and that is why these are known as macronutrients macro means big because these nutrients are needed in large amounts the other nutrients like iron manganese boron zinc copper molybdenum and chlorine these are known as micronutrients because plants need these nutrients in small amounts so they need them in small amounts right so these are the nutrients which are needed for a plant by a plant to be healthy right so what do we do in nutrient management or why is nutrient management needed at all because as we mentioned uh, okay i forgot to mention one more thing is now from where do the plants get all these nutrients they get them from the soil right so now you understand why do you have to water plants every day now let us suppose you have a, a plant at your home if you keep that plant inside a room and keep the room locked do you think that the plant will grow it will not grow because a plant needs air water sunlight and these nutrients correct so so if even if you plant it in your house you make sure that it is either in the balcony or it is in the garden where it can receive air where it can get sunlight so that it can undergo photosynthesis also the soil on which it is planted the, whether the uh, plant will give lot of flowers or it will not give flowers at all that also depends on the type of soil on which it is planted right so the and again most importantly you have to put water on the plant on a regular basis so water air soil these are some of the things from which plants obtain its nutrients so now the question is when all these things are already there with the plant air water and soil so why do we need nutrient management at all that's because we want to get better results right we want to increase the crop production if we do not do implement nutrient management anyways the plants will survive with normal air water and soil but the crop production will be not that great but if we want to increase the production of the crop to a large extent so we need to do something extra so what is that extra which we will do that extra thing is that we will provide some extra nutrients to the plants we will ensure that the plant is never running short of the nutrients so why is nutrient management needed because deficiency of nutrients can result in reduced growth because if any see i i spoke about some 16 nutrients so maybe the soil on which the plant is planted it has maybe 12 nutrients but it lacks the remaining four so deficiency of these nutrients can result in reduced growth okay it can have adverse effect on reproduction so if the plants do not reproduce what will happen it it is something like it things will become stagnant right so you will not see flowers on plants you will not see fruits on plants so because things are not growing so everything will become stagnant more prone to diseases now even in human beings also if we do not eat properly what will happen we do not get the necessary nutrients now when we get do not get the necessary nutrients our body tends to become weak and when we are weak we are more prone to catch diseases when we are very weak what happens even if you go out in cold you will catch cough right but if you are strong enough maybe your immune system will be able to fight with the germs that time so in order to stay healthy we should eat healthy so that we have all the nutrients similarly in plants if there is a deficiency of any of these nutrients it can affect their growth it can affect their reproduction and it can cause diseases in plants right so we do not want all these things so that is why what do we do we do nutrient management now how do we do nutrient management 
we enrich the soil with the nutrients in the form of manure and fertilizers. So these are the two things which actually act as a substitute of the nutrients. So what do we do? We artificially put extra nutrients in the soil. So we don't know whether the soil is already having the nutrients or not. But from our side, we will put these nutrients in the form of manure and fertilizers. Do not worry. I know you must be hearing these names for the first time. So we will discuss about manure and fertilizers in the next two slides. So, so now you understand what is nutrient management. So we are actually compensating the nutrient. We do not want the plant to run short of nutrients. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.